If we compare IRR and RPKI, a challenge with IRR, or more broadly uh, said, who is surfaces, is that there is very little formal specification what data to expect from who is services, how that data is validated against the wishes of the resource owner, uh, where you fetch this data. It's, it's unstructured. Um, at this moment, there's more than 40 IRR sources and numerous routing sources that fall in neither IRR or RPKI categories. And now with, with RPKI, for the first time ever, we have a true chance at a system that works globally, that in every region operators can expect consistency because RPKI has been very strictly defined in the IETF and the RPKI providers, APNIC, JPNIC, uh, have put in a lot of effort to, to adhere to those standards and this, is, uh, this positively benefits operators wishing to use this data. And this Consistency across the globe is a unique opportunity that will help us uh, move routing security forward. RPKI origin validation, uh, the quality of the, the ecosystem cannot improve in a vacuum. It is only through widespread use of this technology, through the use of validators, through the use of RAR services like APNIC uh, uh, offering their hosted RPKI model, uh, that we can find bugs and address these bugs. Software without users cannot progress or increase in quality. So it is really upon us as operators to use RPKI to further improve this. And this is a bit of a challenge because um, not everybody is interested in uh, dipping their toes in cold water. Uh, luckily, we have some companies that are leading the way and are uh, deploying RPKI. And not only does this set an inspirational example, but it also helps iron out the bugs uh, and it makes RPKI more accessible for uh, widespread deployment. If we consider the maturity of the RPKI software ecosystem, I'm, I'm again very optimistic about the next year. Um, roughly, say, Two years ago, the situation looked a little bit grim. There was only a handful of RPKI validator implementations. Not all of them uh, had proper funding, which puts their uh, operation at risk because if there's nobody funded to maintain this software, then the software cannot improve. But now fast forward a bit to, to 2019. There is Enelnet Labs that created Routinator, which is an entirely new implementation uh, written in a different language than all the other ones. OpenBSD is working on an RPKI implementation. Uh, last Sunday, Cloudflare released yet another RPKI validator, again written uh, by different people in a different language. Uh, the RIPE NCC um, uh, staff is investing in RPKI validator version 3. And, and it is very nice, or I should rephrase, it's awesome to see uh, all these validator implementations pop up. Because in order for an ecosystem to be healthy, you need at least three or four different implementations that are competing with each other in order for the operator for there to be two excellent choices. And if we look at software quality uh, over time, let's take a five or 10 year span, uh, software quality goes up and down. It, it often uh, goes hand in hand with, with uh, time available to the developer or funding available or, or other factors that come into play. Uh, and by having this many implementations all striving to be the best possible implementation, Operators are, uh, for the first time since RPKI uh, was invented, uh, really in a position to make choices between various implementations. And if one of them, for whatever reason, is not up to spec, they have uh, choices to, to switch to. And this, this diversity in implementations has removed uh, fragility from the, the ecosystem that would otherwise have prevented large companies from implementing origin validation on their BGP edge.